Men and women are equal in rights, but we're not the same. We're incredibly different in our biology. We're incredibly different in our psychology. We're incredibly different in our interests. I started The Successful Mayor in 2013, long before Andrew Tate started talking about masculinity. <laughs> and uh, we started having discussions, and we did this for a number of years. We spoke all over the world. We did events in New York. We did events in uh, Brooklyn. We did events in Florida, obviously Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane. And one of the things we found was that Australian men in general did not have the appetite to develop themselves as men. The successful male narrative was continually attacked both by men and women in this country, which was very interesting to me because we were actually working for men's development. And a lot of men said, this is a very old-fashioned concept. We're all humans. And at that point, I knew that the brainwashing had been very effective because men were no longer acknowledging that men and women are incredibly different in natural design. And so there was this lack of acknowledgement that we are different. And I think what happened was people confused equality for sameness. Men and women are equal in rights, but we're not the same. We're incredibly different in our biology. We're incredibly different in our psychology. We're incredibly different in our interests. I mean, I was talking to Caroline today. We were driving here, and I said to Caroline, Caroline knows I buy a lot of watches and cars. I said, how many women are that interested in watches and cars? Not many. They're not naturally interested in it. How many women actually want to, be, to get into a fight? You know, I see my, I've got a daughter. I've got two nephews. And I see the difference in behaviors. We are naturally, we have... A, we have a, 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 an inclination for violence. And what they've done is they've, they've, they've packaged the whole thing. All masculine instinct is bad. The, the fact is that what makes us violent is also the same characteristic that makes us sexually attractive and appealing. And they go one, hand in hand. So the ability to understand and balance and manage it is more important rather than saying, I'm not going to have this, this is who I am. Because the coin comes with both sides. And so only aggressive men typically tend to be more ambitious. Aggressive men tend to be the ones that build and create, and protect and defend. The passive men generally don't do those things. Or they do it only when they've been given some sort of a narrative by the government or they're institutionally controlled. Majority of men who I find lacking aggression are also those who lack ambition. Generally speaking, again, there are always exceptions. But when people point out an exception to me, the first thing I say is the presence of an exception doesn't invalidate the norm. The norm still remains. So we started The Successful Male because what we were fi finding was that there's a lot of men going through four types of crisis. Number one, relationship crisis. A lot of men were finding that their girlfriends and wives were cheating on them, leaving them, and they were just losing intimacy. But they were blaming the wives. Our movement was actually about helping men understand that you are a contributor to this particular problem. And the common response was, are you saying I'm to be blamed for the fact that my wife cheated on me? And I said, no, you're not to be blamed, but you are responsible. And there's a very big difference in blame and responsibility. The second crisis that we found men going through was the career crisis. A lot of men are simply not prepared for the new age economy. They don't have the capability to be able to navigate a new world, a social world. We're not in the industrial revolution anymore. A lot of men are going through redundancies, and they're just simply finding that they don't have the capability to excel in their careers anymore. The third type of crisis is the financial crisis. A lot of men are not financially resourced. It does affect their confidence. Like it or not, a lot of man's innate value will come from success. We're not like women. Uh, I think it was Chris Rock that said, dogs, children, and women have inherent value. A man has to earn it. And I 100% believe that. The fact is that I have found that I've gone from being completely struggling to as I've become more and more successful, I've been able to earn more respect in rooms, and I've had more opportunities that I've attracted that way as well. So I do believe that success is uh, definitely a man's good friend. I think every man needs to think. That's why we call it the successful male. And the fourth type of crisis is a health crisis. We found that a lot of men were not taking care of their health. Um, and they were just essentially letting themselves go um, and becoming too laid back. Um, and then eventually I started to see that there was a whole, whole narrative, happy wife, happy life. And are there these subtle narratives that were being media driven, politically driven, driven by women? And I started to see how these would be undermining the confidence and strength that men are supposed to naturally have. So I started to examine and educate myself on what, whether there was a coordinated political agenda to undermine masculinity. And certainly in my view, it appears to be uh, a coordinated agenda to undermine men 
and gaslight men into submission, something that we don't naturally want to do.